welcome once again, everyone. I am um, Yorgos Dedes. I am a lecturer in uh, Turkish, and um, I'm here to talk to you about the uh, degrees offered by the Near Middle East Department, um, or rather the Near Middle East section, sorry. Um, we used to be a department, but now we're part of a much bigger department called um, the School of Languages, Cultures and Linguistics, um, which besides expertise in, in um, uh, Near Middle East, has um, covers South Asia, um, Southeast Asia and Africa as well. So the, the separate um, sections deal with each um, of these areas. And um, also um, we are together with the Department of Linguistics because most of our work is, is language-based and indeed um, we aim for the degrees to be language-based um, as much as possible. So um, this is a key feature of, of um, uh, all the degrees we do. So um, uh, what I will mainly talk to you about today are the, are the, um, the various MA degrees, of course, um, uh, though um, it might be worth um, knowing and bearing in mind that the kind of flagship degree that, 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 that um, um, the section offers is the BA in Arabic and the BA in Languages and Cultures. These are the two degrees that allow specialization again in language uh, study along with, with um, area studies and, and cultural studies related to them. But more particularly about the MA degrees, I will talk about the MA in Middle Eastern Studies, a degree which is which until this year, until this September, was um, known as um, the MA in Near Middle Eastern Studies, but has now been streamlined with the name Middle Eastern Studies only, and it comes um, available with intensive language pathways. I'll talk about them as well. I'll say a few words. Um, um, about the MA in Islamic studies and the MA in Iranian studies, um, which are um, two other degrees that, that, uh, that are offered at MA level. Um, uh, and as their name, you can imagine, um, uh, suggests, um, the MA Islamic studies presupposes good knowledge of Arabic, um, which is the key language of Islamic studies and MA Iranian studies, doesn't presuppose pre any prior knowledge of, of um, Persian, but is focused on, on Iran. And of course, the department, as you would expect, um, offers training in, in, in PhD programs, offers, um, admits PhD students, though for the first year that they come in, they're known as um, M-field students until there is the process of an upgrade and so on. So that for some of you, I will talk about careers options a little bit, but the academic career and moving on to from an MA to a PhD might well be um, a path that, that uh, you want to consider. Um, so um, uh, the section of, of, of the Near Middle East um, is one um, of the oldest sections of the school. Um, indeed, as I said, one of the oldest departments of the school um, going back to its very inception in 1916. So it's got a long tradition of, 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 of dealing with the languages and cultures of the, of the um, Near and Middle East. Near and Middle East being mostly a term used for ancient Near Eastern studies, um, and um, that used to cover the language of Akkadian, Sumerian, Hittite, um, and of course, partly Hebrew as well. Um, and these are indeed languages in which SARS has had um, and still had some expertise. Um, though now they're mainly housed in the um, uh, history and religions department. Uh, so um, it may be worth pausing to reflect a little bit on the fact that, like so many other things in life, the term that we use to describe um, what we do and what the degree is about, whether just Middle East or near Middle East, is of course not just um, Western and colonial term in the sense that it came um, to gain its currency uh, during uh, the colonial period as part of colonialism, but it is um, very difficult um, to be precise about what um, countries today and what areas it covers and to sort of um, uh, determine um, um, 
what exactly is the Middle East in the middle of and what is it east of, um, in a sense that what it's east of is a little bit um, interesting, I mean, easy to understand. It's east of Europe, so you can see how Eurocentric the conception is. And it's, um, in a sense, I think the general understanding is that it's in the middle of the vast area of the east that lies to the east of Europe. Um, it's not the far east, so to speak. Um, but there's still many different ways to, to, to define the area, and, and um, uh, there are many different ways to refer to the um, conundrums about whether ontologically and essentially um, the East, um, um, now you hear a lot about the Global South as well, but the East and the Middle East in particular is, is, is um, um, stands rather um, as an antithesis of the West, as something completely other to the West and so on, and and should we should we so to speak um, um, follow the lines of those colonial definitions that east is east and west is west and never the train shall meet to refer to difficulties in 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 in, in fully accepting an equal footing in in in, in both cultures by um, members of either. Uh, so these are some of the interesting issues with which um, inevitably you will have to deal with um, if you um, end up pursuing the um, degree MA in, in um, Middle Eastern studies. Um, frequently, another way of referring to this kind of um, dominance of the West and, 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 and the way in which its perspective dominates everything else is to refer to the West and the rest. Um, and 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 um, in order to highlight exactly the the, the problems and and the, the, the arrogance of the position that that the West is always in a dominant dominant and dominating position, and though obviously politically and otherwise it may no longer be um, either dominant or dominating, it's the discourses with which we converse about these areas that, that need to come into questioning. Um, and um, the key sort of driving force and principle behind everything we teach at SOAS, not just in the Middle Eastern section or, 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 or the languages and cultures and linguistics department, but everywhere, is that context and comparison is always important, that you must never take any statement out of context, and you must always consider the context in which um, even geography takes place, even the context within um, which um, you need to situate a given area, and you must always compare it, therefore, not just to the West, but, but either to other, um, in, in everything that, that, that we do, whether linguistic work, um, comparison with either a neighboring language or another language, completely different, um, is um, illuminating um, and um, allows us to move um, beyond the, the, the um, uh, key concepts of empires, colonialism as, as a result of um, imperialism or leading into imperialism and coming out of empire, the emergence of nation states, and of course, never forgetting that there are always and, and still stateless nations in, in, in the Middle East. Um, um, the Kurds, the Palestinians come into mind um, uh, in the first instance, but there are other more uh, uh, smaller groups. So um, um, just to give you a, a quick impression of, 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 of the wide range of countries that are covered um, in the Middle East, these are the countries that are covered in the Near East section in the Library of Congress. So these taxonomies, these classifications, of course, are interesting as well in as much as they lead into a classification of knowledge. So you would have to go to that section of a library in order to find books and, and articles and so on, the collections about them. So these are not just abstract categories, but, but, but issues that may well affect your, your, your everyday um, uh, studies as well. A couple of words now about, before we go further into the MA Middle Eastern studies, about the MA Islamic studies, um, 
which um, is a, in many ways um, a modern version of um, what for centuries since the appearance of Islam was the study of the canonical texts, the Quran and the Hadith, the study that used to take place in the madrasa, in, in, that is in a place of learning um, in, um, in the Islamic tradition, which now um, is complemented, of course, by both um, approaches and um, pedagogical methods that do not come from that madrasa tradition. Um, so um, it is, as I said, um, designed for um, students who are, already have the equivalent of the BA Arabic at SOAS competence in Arabic, that is a, a, high, a fairly advanced level of Arabic. Um, the BA Arabic degree is four years, including a year abroad, so students reach quite an advanced level at the end of it. Um, and the degree is, is um, um, aimed at, at academics and teachers and everybody who is interested in Islam, um, both on the practical level, in, that is, in case they are um, themselves engaged in, in, in um, serving different functions within uh, Islamic communities, but also at an academic level. Um, likewise, the MA Iranian studies is a more focused and tailored degree that, that um, as you would expect, focuses on Iran, but um, it takes a long dura, a long term view and looks at the um, history of the area um, in, in, its, in its diachronic um, aspect. But um, and again takes the wider context into into consideration, but it very much also um, looks into um, not just the classical sort of palaces aspect of the of of, of um, Iranian um, dynasties and Iranian um, civilization, if we can call it that part of, of 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 the bigger picture of Islamic civilization, or even if you like as is very common to refer to it these days, the Persian cosmopolis, that is, um, or as some other scholars have called it, the Balkans to Bengal, we'll, we'll, we'll see about that in a little bit, something that can also be covered as part of the MA Middle Eastern studies, that is the study of an area that covers where Persian was a language of literature from all the way from the Balkans to, to, to Bangladesh of today. Um, so it's not all about that pre-modern world, um, which can be exemplified here in, in, in one of the mosques in, in the square of Esfahan in the picture that, that you see, but in, in the sort of technological advances that, that modern Iran has, has um, uh, been perfectly capable of, like interesting bridges and, and, and big infrastructure projects but also in cultural achievements, even after the, the, the Iranian revolution, which are completely in line with similar developments in, in the West, in the Western world. Um, so uh, the degree very much tries to, to um, bring together these different strands and aspects of um, Iranian studies um, as it is practiced. So, we can now sort of talk a little bit more in detail about the MA in Middle Eastern Studies proper. Um, to make the points, make a few key points about, um, in a sense, what it is not about, the, in, in a, or rather what it tries to um, 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 inculcate, um, the study of the Middle East is not only about. Um, so it is not all about Islam and, and the degree um, by virtue of the courses that it allows you to take, the modules it allows you to take, um, uh, I think um, builds a very good case with, with in, from different fields about how one should avoid Islamizing everything to do about the Middle East, uh, that is thinking that everything is a manifestation of Islam, seeing religion everywhere, there is a tendency which partly comes from the region itself to consider that Islam, because it supposedly does not recognize between um, religion and politics, because the two are part of um, the state and religion, as it's sometimes um, referred to in, in an Arabic term, Din Wadawla, um, 
are intertwined, that um, uh, Islam therefore is in everything, but um, there are perfectly, several, perfectly many areas of, of, of human activity, in, whether in, in fine art or, or in medicine or in literature, um, or indeed in, in, in the sciences where not everything is based on Quran and Hadith and what most people would, would identify as the key aspects of Islam. And of course, just as, 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 as it would be worth um, um, considering that, that Islam is not such a, a pervasive and all-encompassing um, concept um, in, in a degree such as this, um, it, it uh, should come as no surprise that, that um, uh, a degree such as this makes strongly the case that, that um, um, the Middle East is not all about Islamic fundamentalism, which is what, unfortunately, um, a lot of um, the West identifies it with. Um, and likewise, it's not all about palaces and the elites. And as I said already, it's not all about uh, nation states either. It's not about empires and nation states. It considers um, stateless and, and, and um, nations or stateless groups. Um, it is all about context and it's all about looking things within their proper um, um, analytical and historical framework. And of course, likewise, um, it isn't all about men, though um, that has traditionally been um, the perspective from which most of the histories and the studies of the of the area have been have been um, approached, but it's about women, children, um, war, and resilience. Unfortunately, are, are key themes as well because there have been conflicts, um, uh, and and the whole point is is in a sense to develop a sense in which it, to of the degree to which these conflicts were not perennial and unavoidable, and anything of all that. Um, uh, so, um, uh, the um, MA Middle Eastern Studies uh, can be combined, as I said, with intensive language. Indeed, three languages have their own pathways, Arabic, Persian, and Turkish, and um, the um, degree in and, um, MA Middle Eastern studies with intensive language is two years if it's done full time and four years if it's done part time because in a sense it's 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 a double MA where you do double the amount of language study that you would normally do. Um, for Arabic, it is wonderful that we're able to offer entry at various different levels of competence. That is, you don't need to start as a beginner, but but um, for Persian and for Turkish. The entry is at beginner level, that is, in order to, for the intensive language pathway to make sense for you, um, you would have to be a beginner in Persian and Turkish. And um, because the three languages, as we will see in a moment, have been the main languages of, of, of the Islamic world, um, uh, Arabic can be studied, of course, on its own. But the study, the intensive study of Persian, can include um, both Arabic and Turkish. Whereas the study of Turkish, the intensive study of Turkish, includes necessarily a study of Persian in the first year um, for those who want it because of the importance that both Persian and Arabic had um, in the development of, of a language like Turkish. Um, so um, to come back to the key features now of the MA Middle Eastern studies, um, the overriding um, uh, advantage and overriding um, in a sense um, principle is that is that is the principle of interdisciplinarity that you're uh, allowed to never mind allowed you have to you are obliged to take to combine modules in at least three disciplines language counting as one discipline um, in case you're wondering so um, uh, but it, study of language, though much encouraged, is not obligatory. So you could combine three um, um, other disciplines as well. Um, and the disciplines are listed there for you, so that you can see they, 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 they um, pretty much um, 
uh, bring together all the departments at SOAS, um, which are pretty much the departments that 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 any school, um, um, folk, you know, um, any university rather focusing on the humanities and the social sciences would have. Um, so it allows you to combine and 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 find ways to bring together much in 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 you know i have here the belt and road initiative map from from the chinese perspective because this is in a sense um a good way to visualize the the different interconnections um um on a geographical um um uh, level on a geographical plane but similar interconnections are needed between the disciplines in, 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 in such a degree. The second key feature, and indeed perhaps the most important feature of the MA, is that um, you have freedom to create your own portfolio of modules. Um, the MA is perhaps different from um, discipline MAs because it doesn't presuppose prior knowledge of, of, of the area. It doesn't presuppose particular study of a particular discipline or a particular area. So you can be a complete newcomer to, to the Middle East um, and, 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 and make the most of this MA. Or you may have already had a degree in Arabic or in Middle Eastern studies from your um, um, undergraduate uh, de um, days, and you would still be able to use this degree to uh, deepen your knowledge and, and, and narrow your focus, um, or rather narrow your focus perhaps in terms of, of, of um, um, something I'll come to in a second, the major course in relation to which you write a dissertation, but also bear in mind the, the interdisciplinarity as well. So, Keeping a wider focus, bringing different disciplines together, something which may not have been a, may not have been possible in an undergraduate degree. Now, the the um, because therefore because of the fact that that students can come to this degree from different levels of background and different levels of expertise on the Middle East, it is of primary importance that they determine they they design, if you like your own portfolio, something that I've in the past sort of um, um, compared to um, coming from Turkish myself, to designing your own kilim. So in many ways, the, the curriculum is not a, a curriculum that is fixed. So no, the curriculum and the portfolio of, of no two students in this degree looks alike. So it's very much like the way the kilims never are exactly a copy of each other. So this degree, does not produce a particular um, line of courses leading to um, an award. It allows you, and it doesn't allow you, it, 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 it forces you to make choices, to think hard about how, what and how you would like to combine. Um, most courses, oh, now they're called modules, are 15 credits these days, there are some 30 credit modules and you would have to consult the website to see what sort of combinations you could do as part of the so-called guided options that these that is options that are um, about the Middle East and from which you can choose to satisfy the interdisciplinary um, requirement but design your own kilim as well. Um, in addition to that, um, you have um, two compulsory modules, um, one on remapping area studies and one about the Middle East. Um, the one about the Middle East, it's called the Middle East in 10 weeks, or will be called, now it's called the Middle East in 10 issues. It is taught only for a term, which is 10 teaching weeks, in which it is a little bit too ambitious to, to try and cover 10 issues we have, we have realized. So then, then we've decided that um, uh, a more appropriate name for the course would be the Middle East in 10 weeks, um, which includes some theory. And as I was trying to intimate earlier, things like what to avoid when studying the Middle East, um, the kinds of things about over-Islamization and so on. Uh, and the remapping area studies course, which is another 15th credit module, is, is, is more about um, theoretical aspects of um, thinking 
about the direction in which area studies in general, not just Middle Eastern studies, but area studies in general are going um, and, and ways in which recent work points in directions not, not, not tried um, and not pursued to date. Um, now, um, in the summary of the key features that I hope as I'm speaking that you've had a chance to, to go over, an important aspect to highlight is the ability to choose from open options up to 30 credits, which is a right that you have in, in a lot of degrees at SARS and, and, and in particular this one. These open options can be modules on any topic um, 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 outside the Middle East. Um, that is, this is what would allow you, we, I said that we emphasize comparison, this would allow comparison, not just with the neighbor, not just with the neighboring situation, but going way beyond that comparison with a completely different area. Um, so you have, um, uh, you don't have to take open options, but you can. And the very wonderful thing about um, this is that you can exercise your right to open options by studying a second language. So though the normal sort of workload used to, we used to say that you take four courses over the year, um, now that, is, that would have been four 30 credit courses over the year. Now um, with the fact, um, with the development that most courses are last for one term, the equivalent of a semester, though still source officially is not in a semester system. Um, uh, there could be many, many more courses, more modules that you have to do. Um, but the equivalent of uh, 215 credit modules um, um, can be an additional language. So that is, you can study 30 credits of a language, of course, as part of the interdisciplinary nature of the course. So you could say, do if you knew some Persian, continue with Persian too. But if you wanted to start Arabic or start Turkish or Hebrew, start another language, you could do that. It could be another language of any of the languages that SARS offers. You could study Burmese, you could study Japanese, you could combine it with, with any language at, at, at SARS, exercising your right to an open option. So this is a significant, so to speak, in my mind, advantage that most students tend to take um, uh, into consideration for this degree. I won't, um, this, is the slide, this slide sort of sets out the sort of way the intensive language pathway works with, with um, splitting of your load between language and, 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 and um, the, the intensive study of the language and the discipline modules as we call them. The, of course, extra feature of the um, intensive pathways that you have a summer abroad um, um, in, 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 in either Jordan or, 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 or Palestine or um, at the minute for Arabic um, in Mashhad in Iran and, and in Turkey as part of the of, 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 of intensive study of the language abroad. And the second year, this is assuming you're doing it full time, you consider you continue with less credits of the language, see 30 credits as opposed to 60 credits, the intensive study of the first year, and you take the other 60 credits of discipline. The total of discipline you see is the same as what an MA in Middle Eastern studies would be, but you take 60 plus 45 plus 30, um, um, 135 credits of language on top of that. Um, this information is also on the on the website. So I would like to leave a lot of time for questions. So I will skim through um, the, the, the the following slides on the importance of the three languages, uh, rather sorry, the four languages that are um, available in um, uh, for study as part of in the near Middle Eastern section, Arabic, Hebrew, Persian, and Turkish. Um, um, there is very little to be said. Most of you would be interested in Arabic about how it is a major language historically and also con in, in the contemporary world of the Middle East and, and spoken by um, uh, a great number of countries, of states, and, and, and people. 
um, it is an official language of the UN and so on, but it'd be worth pointing out that one of the um, surprising elements, um, aspects of Arabic is that it has a very um, um, significant variety in its dialects and in its spoken versions, which are very different from the um, uh, written register, um, written educated register, which is the one you mainly study um, at SARS, though of course you do study the, the dialects as well. Persian is a language more, which is Indo-European, it is, it is not Semitic, it comes, it is therefore a bit more familiar to those of you with knowledge of even English, which is Indo-European, but especially of languages like French, Italian and Spanish, with whom it shares um, uh, a lot of structural features. The key thing about Persian is that it was the language of, um, like Arabic, it developed into a language of literature and culture in the Islamic world, especially under the period of, 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 of the Turkish dynasties after the year 1000. So it is known primarily in, in, in the historical dimension as the language of poetry and literature. Um, um, and um, it is worth remembering that it isn't just spoken in today's Iran, but of course in Afghanistan and Tajikistan and other places um, outside um, the country of Iran, where it is most famously um, studied. Um, uh, like, unlike Arabic, but like Turkish as well, Persian does not have a huge difference between the spoken and the written, so that is a significant advantage when studying the language. Um, um, Turkish and Persian rather needs to be considered with Turkish as part of what I referred to earlier, the Balkans to Bengal complex, which is both in a historical dimension and mainly pre-modern in as much as the advent of, of capital, of, um, capitalism and colonialism and the nation states in a sense dispersed the sense of unity that was there up to a point but but um, one of the links the political links behind Pers the Persian cosmopolis was that were the Turkish dynasties and Persian um, was um, used um, in, in in a lot of places, where the rulers were Turkish dynasties, the rulers were Turkish. So Turkish developed into a literary language East and West for the Turkish world as well. And, and um, uh, then developed an interesting characteristic, which, which um, may be of interest to a lot of you in as much as it was used as an administrative language. It means that we have myriads, literally thousands of documents administrative documents about the history, not just of the Ottoman Empire, but of all the lands of the Middle East, including Iran, written in Turkish that have not been studied anywhere near as much as the um, archival documents and, and in, in Arabic and Persian have, simply by virtue of the fact that there's not as many people that were experts in the, in, in the language. So, for the reading of these um, documents, archival documents, or documents of all kinds that are housed today in archives, um, you need a proficiency in modern Turkish and then in Ottoman, which is the version of the language written in the Arabic script. Um, uh, so, though you may not have considered it, um, Turkish offers some advantages, both for the historical and the political aspect as well. Um, I don't need, a lot of you, when thinking of SARS, will know that, that one of the great advantages of SARS as well is the um, amazing wealth um, of its library, which is a national library, one of the five research libraries in, in the UK, um, and, and, and um, a great asset um, to the school and to London. Before I, we move on to, to questions, a, a, a couple of words about career opportunities um, in terms of your um, the kind of roles, sorry, the kind of, let's switch the slides around. The roles, I mentioned the academic thing, but as you can see, graduates of this degree work either in, in NGOs and all kinds of, 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 of companies that go um, um, combine expertise in, in the different disciplines that, that, that are meant to be combined, economics, politics, um, um, and of course, humanitarian work as well. Some go into education, 
um, research and analysis is uh, uh, also very common um, and risk consultancy is, is very common and um, in light of the fact that I've, I've managed to go on for a bit for almost 10 minutes longer than I wanted to I will stop here so that we can move to um, your questions so thank you very much for listening and uh, I'm not I think I'm pretty sure you can all speak right you can all unmute yourself and speak that has not been so um the floor is open to um your questions please we have a hand from marcel hello hello, hello. yes sorry i feel my volume silo let me just um no we can hear you all right it'd be, it'd no, I, mean, be very I, can't, nice. I can't really hear you oh i sorry. see give I me see. a second okay. No problem. We you we can hear you. Uh, I, yeah, I can. Hear you. I know I can hear you better now. Excellent. Well done. Okay. Um, um, yeah. So I just had a question about um, just the course and in general, um, just some general questions. Um, so for me specifically, I wanted to do the MA um, just because it's something that I've always been interested in. Um, Sorry, which MA? From, um, either the Middle Eastern studies or the Iranian studies. Okay. Yes. Yeah, fine. Um, yeah, so I actually come from a game design background, so very different from, yes, from yes. this. So is it is that something that is very um the uh, the, the MA Middle Eastern studies would be for you, not the MA Iranian studies. The MA Iranian studies usually wants a little bit of background in Iranian studies to begin with, whether via Middle Eastern studies or something else. So but the MA Middle Eastern studies is exactly designed, um, or rather it it you know it doesn't produce a specific type. It is designed for um, without any particular background in mind. Um, and when I say it's designed, as you will have gathered, the MA Middle Eastern Studies offers you the opportunity to study the Middle East from available options at source. So you would be, you know, you, you would have, um, you would need to prove that you're academically sound and you have some <laughs> evidence okay. that you would be able to cope with the degree, but yes, you could, you could do it. That's fine. Like, um, with the with the Iranian studies, so I, I do find that interesting. When you say it requires a certain level, what do you mean? It requires a certain background. I said not a level. You know, it. it you know. Oh, okay. So, you know, that for you to have studied something about the Middle East, you to to have had some prior exposure to Iran. Usually, that is that is what is um, expected. But you can, um, as you will have perhaps noticed, that there isn't much difference between what you can do. The MA Iranian Studies has its own um, course, the um, requirements in once you come into SOAS, but you could take the same courses within the structure of the um, MA in Middle Eastern Studies. It okay. really is more a case of what you want your degree to be in, what the name of your degree should be rather. And for somebody like you with no prior background, I would imagine that something like Middle Eastern Studies would be more um, appealing in giving anybody a, a clearer impression of what it is you've done yeah okay that makes sense um okay yeah, i also wanted to know about because of the career opportunities as well um where i've been working as a as a as a game designer i find i find that it wasn't very um the fact of sitting down all day or just being a, or being very much in an office environment was, was kind <laughs> yeah, of mentally straining so I wanted to know for career opportunities with this kind of stuff, because I do find it interesting. Is there anything that is very like on your feet or quiet? Um, well, uh, good point. I mean, you know, as you will have maybe seen on the slide, humanitarian work or working on the field um, normally is, is even just the, the, sh the mere fact of living in the Middle East means that you won't be sitting in your chair. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, for 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 the entire length of the day because something will have happened to to <laughs> yeah. to shatter the sense of of, of 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 peace and quiet in a sense that that there is development but you know joke aside um um there there the, the would be works that that there would be jobs and lines of of of, of work that that um would involve a much more hands-on experience and so on you know do you know anything specific friend, just so let, i can may i it? may i, sorry, I sorry, see somebody yeah. else yeah so let 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 me have a few let's have a round of questions i'll come back to you myself for your question but georgia well, has you. raised a hand and may i encourage all of you will, will i'll take three or four questions so that we hear the questions first 
and then see whether we can combine the answers. Yes, Georgia, please. Uh, hi, I, I have a question. I've also put it in the chat, but at the end oh. of the year, I'll yes. have a BA in Middle Eastern Studies. Yes. Is there an option of an MA in Middle Eastern Studies that's only a year, but still includes Arabic language? Um, all right, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll address that. Let's hear from Steve's question. Let's hear from Steve with your point or question, Steve, if you can hear us. Sorry. Um, yeah, this may be a bit specific, but I was just wondering, I would be a mature student um, mm -hmm. in my 50s, but I have a PhD in Japanese history, mm -hmm. um, but I haven't done Arabic um, or any Middle Eastern studies before. So I was just wondering, I know there's the, talked about the two-year path with the MA and in intensive language studies, but I was also wondering whether it would be advisable or possible before that to even do the undergraduate BA in Arabic, particularly oh, if... Because mm -hmm. I'm from the US, so I never did A levels or whatever. I mean, I had whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good point about language competence. I'll I'll, I'll address that. Right. Um, and in the me and indeed, actually, your two questions are related, Georgia. Yes, by all means, um, in the one year full time MA in Middle Eastern Studies, you can study not one but two languages. But certainly, you can do thirty credits of Arabic. You can't do 60 credits of Arabic because, as you will appreciate, um, you can't do two levels of a language at, 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 at a given year. Um, if your Arabic, however, is, is very advanced, as it may be in your case, I don't know, you could um, do courses. There are some courses in literature and, and one in history that require, or the ones in Islamic studies that require knowledge of Arabic. So though they're not strictly speaking language courses, they're language use courses as they're called, not language acquisition courses, um, you could do them. But certainly, certainly you can do 30 credits of a given language as part of the one year full-time MA, or the one year MA in Middle Eastern studies. Even in that MA, you could study if you were so inclined a second language. Steve, and on the point of um, um, uh, levels of language reached and so on, and BA Arabic versus, say, the MA and intensive Arabic pathway, um, the truth is, the honest truth is that the BA Arabic would allow you to reach a much higher level of Arabic, but of course in double the time, in, in, in four years. Um, so um, whether it is, um, you know, it depends on what you want to use it for. I would have thought um, that um, the MA with the intensive um, pathway for Arabic, which is properly intensive, that is you do study 60 credits of Arabic in the first year. In the first year of your BA in Arabic, you study 90 credits of Arabic if you just do Arabic. So you do more in one year. In the BA Arabic, you don't go on to a summer course. In the BA Arabic, you go on to year two, and then you go on a year abroad. In the intensive language program, you do 60 credits plus the year, the summer abroad. So it's almost the same, um, um, and a little bit more even, than the first year of the very intensive BA Arabic. And then you continue with Arabic in your second year. Obviously, if you're interested then that still, this, is, this gets you to a very good level. You've accomplished quite a lot in a short period of time, but it would still fall short of competence in the language and so on. You would then have to make plans either if you wanted to go into another PhD um, by studying in the, in, the, in the area, spending more time in the area yourself, or finding a, another degree or continuing with the study of the language as part of your PhD degree. Um, is 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 the more direct answer I can give you about um, the um, uh, levels of Arabic that you will be um, dealing with. Okay. Um, but yes, um, you know, as I was saying earlier, that you know, you obviously come with an awful lot of linguistic and 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 and, and historical expertise and so on. Still, the degree because of the way it allows you to mix and match things should have quite a few things to offer to you yeah 
Um, even if you don't have questions, the rest of you, I don't see any more hands raised. Uh, Georgia, oh no, somebody, yes. Oh, sorry, let me put my glasses on. Um, Pick a horn, you, you had um, um, you momentarily raised your hand and now Julia has. I was going to say, you don't need to think of a, of, 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 of a specific question, any comments and, 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 and something you want to share about your background and how that might fit and what you might want to do would, would, be, would be most welcome. All right, sorry. Pick a horn if, if I'm pronouncing your, perhaps your first name correctly. Would you like to come on or? Hi, sure. Um, it's All right, yeah, go ahead. No, no, yeah. don't be here. Go Tisha, ahead. Sure. And, and then uh, Julia has her hand up. We'll, uh, we'll, Julia will come to you afterwards. You both ask your questions first and then I'll try to address them. Yes, please. I don't really have any questions, actually. I have, I have a background in journalism and I wanted to branch out into um, curating arts. I was looking at curating arts and um, I've always, uh -huh. always had an interest in um, Islamic studies. And so I just wanted to explore. That's why I'm here today. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Okay. I'll 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 come to that. I'll I'll I'll, I'll have I have a couple of words to say about that. That's great. So, Julia, what was your point? Yeah, I was just wondering if um if I was to do the MA with the intensive language, but I've got a pretty extensive background in Arabic. Um, would it be? But I wanted to do a second language as well. Would it be best to choose my intensive language as Arabic, or if I want to do Turkish or Persian, do that on the, yeah, the yeah, um, yeah. other option? I was wondering. I, 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 yeah, I'm, you've come to the right shop. I, I can, I, I'll deal with that. But let me first go back to think of, you know the, the question about, you know, art history, curating, um, Islamic art, Islamic studies, and so on. Obviously, I mean. This degree would be quite, the MA Middle Eastern Studies would offer you the chance to do, I didn't go into the sort of nitty gritty, it's not even nitty gritty, it's pretty self-evident. You need to choose a major course in the degree, which is a course in relate, it is major only in the sense that it is a course in relation to which you write a dissertation. This course can of course be a course on, on, on Islamic art history and the good advantage of this degree is that it wouldn't require you to have significant background in art history. But nonetheless, you could um, um, uh, write a dissertation on a related topic and you could take more courses that are, the, the, the courses that are related to Islamic um, art. Um, and, um, from that point of view, um, though it isn't a specifically art historical or Islamic art degree, it's got a lot to recommend it for, especially if you were considering, I know that a year of language isn't, 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 doesn't make or break a career, or doesn't make or break anything, but actually an introduction to a language may, it doesn't happen to everyone, but may kind of change your life a little bit because only once you start learning a language, which is not the easiest thing to do. I mean, not, you know, there, there is no such thing as an easy language. Some are easier than others. Um, some are harder than others. Um, but um, the mere fact that you develop an affinity, the, 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 ten, the, the temptation to go to the country for improving your language leads to other things, you know, a lot of serendipitous things happen when you start learning a language, or may happen. I'm not promising that this will happen to all of you, but my experience from teaching one of the minor languages like Turkish is that students are always pleasantly surprised with one or another aspect. Um, so I would, I, I would say in conclusion, Pickathorn, that this is, you've not come to such a bad shop here. It is not specialized in what you want, but it allows you to do what you're partly interested in. It allows you to combine it with a language which we would strongly recommend, which you may not want to do. Um, so it's got a lot of things going for it. Coming, Julia, to your point about language, you, I think you yourself could see that it would make more sense to do either Persian or Turkish so that you can do more of that and less of the Arabic because you could still do, say if you did intensive Persian, there is a small catch about that, I'll come to that in a second, 
because that, which is simply that for intensive Persian, you can't do in the first year 60 credits of Persian because there is no such course anymore. Um, in the good old days, so to speak, we could afford and we had 60 credits like we now have 60 credits of Arabic, intensive Arabic for a year. For Persian and for Turkish and for Hebrew, the maximum that you can do of a language in a given year is 30 credits. But you could either do, you could do 30 credits of Persian plus an Arabic course at an appropriate level. This will probably be allowed for Persian. It isn't officially allowed yet, but, but I'm sure it will be allowed. Um, and the same would be true in Turkish, but if you did intensive Turkish, you would have to do in your first year Turkish and Persian because of the way Turkish has been so strongly influenced by Persian. The second year, when you would, you would go to the summer abroad for Turkish, where you could easily spend a bit of the summer with doing something Persian related, a, a, a significant advantage or in terms of the summer abroad um, of the three languages of Turkish, perhaps, is that you go to one of Turkey's better universities for the Turkish summer course, Boazici University, Bosphorus University in Istanbul, which is, which is a, a, a powerhouse of a university, possibly Turkey's best, or one of Turkey's better universities, and Turkey has good universities, not that the neighboring countries don't, but it's got a, a long tradition in it um, as, as well in university level study. Whereas for both Arabic and Persian, you go more to language um, institutes not, that are not part of, 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 of a large um, um, university. In, in Iran, it is. You go, if you can go to Iran, you go to Mashhad, the third Dosi University in Mashhad, which is a good place for learning Persian away from sort of the corruption, say, of, of, of Tehran, but um, in terms of accent and in terms of other things, corruption. So you learn kind of pristine, proper um, Persian in Mashhad, but the university is not quite the powerhouse that, 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 that um, you know, a big university might be. Anyway, so for Turkish, as I was saying, you, once you complete the, 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 the summer abroad, you come back for more Turkish, and in the second year, you could use, exercise your right to 30 credits of open option by taking more Arabic. So you, you, you would be learning two new languages and doing a bit of language if you did Turkish. So certainly consider doing the other languages. And in many ways, this is a plea I would make to all of you, partly related to the point that Steve here made earlier, who comes from an academic background and, you know, as he said, you know, from Japanese and so on. Arabic is not, I mean, I alluded to, to this when addressing Steve's point, is that Arabic needs is a language that is wonderful, both in terms of its, its literary and intellectual richness, um, but it needs a five-year plan. It needs a long-term plan um, for you to be able to make a lot with Arabic. You need to be thinking before even the two years of a, of a um, MA and intensive Arabic um, in order to be able to bring the language to a, um, a, a, a seriously useful level, um, partly because of the diglossia problem, diglossia being the technical name, a bit old fashioned given to when the written register of a language and the spoken register are almost mutually um, um, uh, non-understandable. So, um, this is not the case for Persian and Turkish. So for these languages, you are at a much, at, at a much a bigger advantage of getting somewhere within after a year, even just a year or certainly after two years. Um, and they have the advantage of being languages that are not preferred. The same applies to Hebrew that are not preferred by the majority of the students. As you can well appreciate, the overwhelming majority of the students interested in the Middle East are interested in Arabic for um, some, for good reasons, because they've given it some thought, either um, um, in terms of their interest or in terms of their own personal background and so on. They have a perfectly good reason for doing Arabic and that is exactly as it should be. But there's, there are cases of, 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 of students who are interested and people who are interested in the Middle East, but they're not, they're not quite sure what language in the Middle East they should be in, engaged with. 
And this is something that I would like you to reflect upon um, uh, as you consider your, the, the business of your application. I've talked a lot again, so I've now hey, a point. Um, sorry, Anna, yes. Um, I imagine people may have other places to go to another talk that they might want to attend. I, I think so. So our next sessions are about to begin. Thank you Excellent. so much for your presentation and for answering all, all these right. questions. For okay, those of you who yeah. might have had some questions that weren't addressed, um, I'm sorry, sorry to rush off here, um, but I'm going to put my email address in mm -hmm. the chat here. Um, so feel free if you have questions that weren't addressed today to contact me and we'll we'll make sure that you connect with the right people um, to, to get all the information that you want. So it's AF35. And the information is on UK. Um, so feel free to send any questions or comments or thoughts along to me and I'll make sure they get to the right people. And thank you, Yorgos, for the presentation. No problem. Yes, a pleasure as always. All right. Nice to see you or see you on see your names on the screen, everybody. I hope I look forward to seeing your applications if you decide to apply and hope you you found you will take something useful away from the session today. Goodbye. Great. Thanks everyone. Bye.